In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel the Accounts Payable Agent Report within QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our free QuickBooks Online file for Craig's Design and Landscape and Services. We're going to go on down to the reports down below. We're considering the Accounts Payable Aging Report, which is going to be supporting one of our major financial statement reports, those being the balance sheet. We're considering a particular account on the balance sheet, given more detail within it, that being the Accounts Payable account. Let's therefore open first the balance sheet. We're going to open up the balance sheet that's in our favorite reports. This is, of course, one of our favorite reports because it's basically a financial statement report. Once open, we're going to change the dates up top, those dates being 010119 to 123119. Let's go ahead and run that report. Then we're going to copy this. So I'm going to copy the tab or duplicate the tab as it's said in our window here. Right click and duplicate, which basically copies it. So it's another tab which will have the balance sheet in it. Then I'm going to close the hamburger to give us a little bit more real estate, a little bit more screen time, a little screen room. I'm going to hold down control and scroll up and it's about 125. Now we're going to be concentrating on the payable. So we're not looking at the assets at all. I'm going to close up the entire asset section. We're in the liabilities section. We're considering the payable. You can, you can think about a similar series of questions that you would have with the receivable account, with the payable account, which might be the boss is going to ask us if we're the bookkeeper and the boss or the owner is going to ask us, how much money do we owe other people? We can look at the trustee balance sheet and we can say, hey, we owe other people, other vendors, 1602.67. Then you can imagine the follow-up question from that would be, who do we owe and when do we owe them? Well, we can't get that from the detail. Our normal Zoom function, our normal, our, whenever asked more detail about anything is usually, well, I'll, I'll use the auto Zoom here and give them more detail. But the more detail is a transaction report, which is basically a general ledger which does give us the activity of the bills and whatnot in the payments, but it does so by date, as all GL or transaction detail reports do. We don't need it by date. We need to know who uh, who we owe, right? So we need to know the who uh, we owe money by vendor, typically is the next question. So I'm going to go back to our report and say, all right, that's why the account, the, the QuickBooks basically has its own kind of account for the payable. Notice it's not just an other liability even though it is another current even though it is a current liability you have to have basically another grouping for it in other words if you go back to the first tab and we go down to the accounting down below and look at the chart of accounts when we set up the chart of accounts and we look at accounts payable even though it is an, a liability a current liability account we don't just call it a current liability we have another account type other current liabilities and that's going to be quickbooks saying hey this this account here, if you put it into other current liabilities, we're going to force you every time that you want to post something to accounts payable, you must assign a vendor because we want to basically make another sub report for you that is then going to give the information by who you owe. Therefore, you cannot just have, any, you know, anytime you do something with accounts payable, then you have to have a vendor so that we can generate those other reports. Therefore, we need a different account type so that you can assign that because that's not a characteristic you would have in other types of, of current liability accounts. Okay, now that we know that, we're gonna get say, okay, let's go back to our reports. We're gonna go back to our reports here and look into our reports. If we're looking at the uh, aging detail report or the aging reports for accounts payable, let's take a look at what it's not gonna be in the favorites unless we work in accounts payable all the time. And many people do. You can have, again, a whole department if you're a large company that deals with payables and who we owe and organizing the payable information. They would be dealing with these reports a lot. Then we'd have the business overview. That's the balance sheet. That's the P&L. That's the statement of cash flows. Who owes you money dealing with accounts receivable type of accounts, sales and customers, sales cycle accounts dealing with revenue type of accounts, and then we have what you owe. So what you owe owing other people, you would think that would be basically accounts payable type of account. If I was me, if it was me naming the accounts uh, headings, I would, be, I would think accounts payable type of account. So we've got the accounts payable aging detail, and then we've got the accounts payable aging summary. We're going to ultimately go there, but before we get there, I'd like to take a look first at the vendor balance detail, vendor balance summary. These are the two four reports or the two reports with a detailed or two different versions of them that you would be using often in the payable cycle. So let's then go to the detail report. Let's look at the vendor balance detail report. 
And once that opens up, we're going to be changing the dates up top. I'm going to go back up top and take a look at the dates. I'm going to customize the date here. I'm going to put it as of 123119. And then I'm going to run that report. Now, and there we have it. Now, if we go to the bottom of this, I'm going to, I'm going to minimize the hamburger. Uh, well, let's duplicate this report. I'm going to go back up top, right click on this report and duplicate it. So that it'll create a tab to the right. Now I'm going to close the hamburger. I'm going to make it a little bit larger, holding down control and scrolling up. And let's make it at 125. If I go down to the bottom of this report, the bottom line, 1,602.67. If I go back to the balance sheet, that's 1,602.67. So it's tying out to, it's supporting, of course, giving more detail about the accounts payable, but not breaking it out by date as the transaction detail report would, but rather by vendor. Vendor meaning who we owe. We're paying other people. We bought stuff goods or services and owing it the detail within it will of course be the bills those are the, the bills are the forms that generate accounts payable so accounts payable us owing other people money are generated from the form of the bill which would increase accounts payable and usually record the other side to something like an expense then we have who we owe these would of course be the vendors so this type of report and the summary report would then answer the question we're asking the question the boss asks us how much money do we owe other people 1,602. Well, who do we owe? Then we can go to the balance detail or summary report, give that information. Then why do we owe them? Then we can open up the particular bill that's making up what we owe them. And the next question is, of course, well, how pass, I mean, when is it due? When do we have to actually pay them? When do we have to, you know, actually get the cash together to pay this out? For that, we can look at the summary or the, um, the aging report. So let's go back to our first tab open the hamburger back up we're going to go down to the reports down below we're going to scroll back down to where uh, our reports are that we're considering at this time it's not in the overview section then we have the who owes you accounts receivable sales that's a receivable or a sales report income statement profit and loss who owes you that's where we want to be we want the accounts payable we have the aging and we have the uh, aging detail and summary let's first look at the detail report so open up the accounts payable detail. We're going to change the date back up top to 123119. And there we have it. And I'm going to say uh, run that report. Scrolling back down, I'm going to close the hamburger. And now we fit on the page. That looks good. If we scroll all the way down, we're going to get back to that 1,602.67. Because, of course, this is another report back to the balance sheet that is supporting that 1,602.67 here on the balance sheet. So now the question is, how, when do we have to pay this information? Back to our report. If we scroll back up top, then we're going to have our similar kind of aging. 31 to 60 days past due. This would be the one based on due date that you would expect to pay most. So once you get this, inf and then, then you have the 31 to 60, similar to the receivable aging. So obviously, once you have this information, then you're going to consider who's the most valuable person I need to pay first and how pat, you know, when is it due? So those are the two kind of considerations you would think of when considering, you know, which ones are we going to pay and what order will we pay them? And you, you can also note that if I go, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this tab again. I'm going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate it. So if we duplicate that tab and then I'm going to go back to the first uh, page and go to the uh, the hamburger scroll up top and if, and if I go to the new up top and look at the reports you'll recall in the vendor section when we had the pay bill section you got kind of similar information that that will be here and that you can kind of sort sort who you owe money to the pay bills is basically supporting the payable this information can help you deal with who you want to be paying at, at any particular time the obviously the payable detail report will give you a nice detailed report of that which will give you basically you know that information in a more you know detailed way that you can basically analyze now let's take a look at the summary report and so i'm going to go back over here and we're going to go down to our reports and we're going to do this one more time for the summary report and then we'll practice printing that one here's the business overview here's the who owes you Here's the sales by end customers. Here's the who owes, uh, who you owe. We're looking for the accounts payable aging. Let's look at the summary this time. Now we're going to open up the summary report of it, changing the date back up top again to 123119. 
And we're gonna go ahead and run that report. Then I'm gonna close the hamburger. And so now we have a similar kind of summary detail where we have the 31 to 30, the 31 to 60 up top again. Nice quick view that we can see this bottom line number, of course, tying out to that 1,602.67 that's on the balance sheet. And we can get kind of a quick view of uh, the aging here. So I'm going to go ahead and do our, our, our similar type of thing to the other that we've done in the other reports. We'll customize this. We'll print it. We'll export it and so on. So we're going to customize this report up top. We're going to make the negative numbers bracketed and red, although I don't think they're already in. We're going to move, remove the cents or the pennies. We're going to go to the header and footer. We're going to take out the date prepared, time prepared. There's no basis here because once again, accounts payable like accounts receivable is an accrual account. So therefore, we're, we have a supporting report for an accrual type of account. So there's no option as to whether it's going to be, you know, a cash or accrual. It is an accrual type of report. So there we have it. And it looks good. Let's go ahead and think about we could uh, email it, but we have multiple reports now. So we could then uh, have uh, export it to a PDF and then attach each individual report or zip them. And we can also do that by printing it to a PDF file, which we will do, or exporting to a PDF and making one PDF file with it, which we will also do. Let's go practice that by selecting the reports here. Then we're, we're going to be uh, print that report. We're going to print it to the cute PDF printer. So there it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and print that report. It's then going to ask us where do you want to put the report as it does. And we're going to go into other reports here. And I'm going to, that's where we want it. I'm going to change the name down below to AP Aging Summary. Now, again, you'll, you may be tempted to put a, put a dash between the A and the P. Can't typically do that in a Windows computer. So just AP or dots if you want to do it, periods. So I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to close this. Then we're also going to export it. So I'm going to go to the drop down. We're going to export to Excel. There it is. Let's see if it fits on a page. We're going to go to the uh, page layout side. Does not quite fit on a page. We'll have to do a little bit of formatting. We're going to go back to the prior page. Say, what if we made this a little bit smaller? I'm going to make A and B a little bit smaller. Would that be okay? And it kind of, that's too far. It did some funny there. So if we need to do that, we will. But now I'm going to highlight all these rows and let's make all of them just a little smaller. Would that be okay? And then it, it, it made this one uh, merged, but that's okay. That looks pretty good. I think that'll work. Let's keep it there. Then we're going to open up our other uh excel report we're going to add a new tab to it let's add a new tab because then, then we're going to copy and paste our information here we can do with the triangle up top or we can select Control a then we're going to right click and copy or you can say Control c then we're going to go back to our new report you got to be in cell a1 remember in a1 and paste the entire thing then i'm going to rename the cell down below by double clicking on the cell or the page the tab and the worksheet the sheet and this is going to be AP, AP, aging. And then we're going to print the entire thing out here, which has what, one, two, three, four, five reports in it. So we'll save it. I'm going to go up top, go to the file tab. We're going to go ahead and print that. We're going to be printing it to the cute PDF printer once again, key component, however, not changing it from the print active sheet to the print entire workbook, now containing five pages. There's the five pages also five reports on those five pages then we're going to go ahead and print that which will create the pdf file it shall then ask us where do we want to put that pdf file we're going to say we'd like it in this folder the prior folder it won't let me do it It doesn't want to do it there there it goes and then we want to put it in the other reports again it's going to overwrite it because it had four reports now last time now it's got five so we're going to overwrite it that looks good. Then I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to close this back out. I don't want to save the data I've copied. And then I'm going to go back over here. And this is what we have so far. So we have the other reports. We could attach individually. Or we could put them in one zip file, which is a little bit nicer by zipping the entire file. And sending the zip file in a PDF in, a, in an email. That would be a little nicer. We can send the Excel worksheet if people would like to see it in that format. Or we can send the one PDF file with the multiple reports on it, which would look like this, scrolling through the second report, the third report, the fourth report, the fifth report.